Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a pretty epic 1v1 for you today on the map Famineville. Playing as allies, we have Leo and Victim from the Netherlands. Uh, he's using the US Special Operations Battle Group and he takes a really unique approach to that battle group and to this map. And then opposite him on the Axis side, we have J Lodge from America playing as the DAC Armored Support Battle Group. He's ranked number 53 in 1v1s, but you can see from his record, he's a pretty talented player kind of across the board. Uh, so really interested to see how this one shakes out. It goes for a while. That will roll on to the match. Here we go. We got Jay Lodge here in red playing the DAC. He's on the east side of this east side of the map, north side of the screen. Uh the top side of the screen. Sorry. Yeah, I why is north down here? You're gonna uh anyway. Relic, please fix. Uh and then here we got Leo and Victim. So he's playing the U.S. and he's immediately going barracks and getting an engineer out. Um, meanwhile, J Lodge has already gone armored support. Prod shits and Panzer Grenadier. So it looks like we're going to see kind of the fairly looks like fairly meta from J Lodge without the Bersaglieri, without the Glosses or the L6 spam. So that immediately makes me happy. Um, yeah, so this this is something that I've talked to a couple people about. The engineers start with USF, and people go back and forth. Um, so Orange Pest would say, and has said at least when we were talking about Road to Tunis, you want the second scout for the Captain Tower. And I think on this map, you really do, because it plays so wide. And the engineers, they don't get a cap rate bonus, but they do get this utility where they can put up heavy cover, they can put up wire. Um... So I see the value, and it's just kind of that conversation back and forth. Oh man, good burst of the motorcycle, and uh, one of the scouts goes down. Another long burst. Yeah, that scout should retreat. Rifles move up to contest with the engineers. That motorcycle is going to get away, and I like this play. So he caps the fuel, he pushes the scouts off, and then he backs over here, and he can initiate repairs. If he wants. Yeah, and then these engineers, right, they're going to do, like, literally no damage at range. I think, I kind of, I kind of think if the U.S., you have to build engineers separately, then maybe they should get a little bit more combat bonus. Maybe the assault engineers, because uh, they, they feel a little bit underperforming, especially when you compare them to, like, sappers and panzer pioneers. Oh, man, I bet you J-Lodge wished... He had uh, repaired that bike. Second Panzer Grenadier squad comes out. Oh, well, these guys, yeah, they're not in a good position. Rifles get up close to them. Yeah, this squad here in cover, with the support from the bike, I like this. He could even, yeah, he's repairing the bike, but still giving the combat bonus. These that's smart positioning. But you see, like this is so. Leo's really focused on the left side of the map and all of his combat power is here, but he's basically seeding all of these resources to include this fuel to J Lodge. And so right now it's not a big deal because he's been able to hold this, but uh, that's, it's kind of a risky approach. And so we'll see how this pans out. Two rifles up here. God shoots and moves up for the combat bonus. Third squad of P Grands hits the field, but the other they're both in base. Yeah, and these P Grands getting whittled down. Rifles take a bunch of damage, but no, really only drop a couple of models. And now this squad will be able to force away this bike. Maybe this is something that I should pay more attention to. Look, I mean, he's massed all of his combat power here and he's, he's been able to hold it. Well, now until these two P Grand squads come out from base. Uh, they close to really, this isn't the ideal combat range, but they're going to maximize the DPS. And now the bike has vet one. So this is where it starts to get really dangerous. With a tracer fire combat debuff. Alright, so rifles pushed off. Now a rifle squad over here to deal with these Panzer Pioneers. So they're going to be forced away. Leo going for the, uh, the infantry support center. J Lodge getting his light support company out. And J Lodge going to try to take control of this fuel to counter the fact that rifles over here are capping. Now, these engineers may do a decent job forcing off the crowd shoots in if it was just them. <clears throat> because with the, the fire rate of the grease guns and the high target size, they'll get penetration. Oh, yeah, they're just going to retreat. That tracer fire debuff is really powerful, especially in the early game. 
Yeah, so it looks like J Lodge will be able to keep this fuel. And actually, he's going to push over and grab this VP as well. Get the triple cap on and continue to apply that VP pressure. Well, I say that, and then Leo is going to throw his rifles in here as well. And grab the flank. So interesting that you see him now. I, I mean, I like this setup, but he's basically switched to the opposite side of the map. And he's got a lot of flexibility here. Captain's hit the field. Uh, J Lodge getting fire support elements out. So I imagine we'll see a flak balloon. Probably an LAIG. Continues with this build. He's going for veteran gunners for increased weapons penetration. And I. Um, I forget who said this the other day. The general rule of thumb is superior fire drills against USF for the coax and whole machine gun damage boost. And the uh, the veteran gunner's weapon penetration against the Brits. But if he plans on using the uh, the flak filling and he thinks he's going to have to deal with Greyhounds, Chaffees, then having that penetration is helpful. There we go. First LMG upgrade hit. Oh, engineers close. With the flamethrower popping. Oh, good grenade. Forces engineers away. The Panzer Pioneers still don't have an, an upgrade. Wow. Leo is pushed all the way up with these rifles. And th this is the strength of this garrison. And the, the DAC really don't have a good garrison clearing tool outside of the uh the flamethrower but man that captain sitting in a house is able to hold these two pgrand squads back for a long time mg34 hits the field leo going for an immediate at gun so he is even though he hasn't seen anything worried about DAC vehicles hitting the field normally i'd say it's smart to be prepared although i think at the, the high level sometimes you see Early investment into AT guns. If you don't time it right, you end up wasting the manpower. But considering, I don't think J Lodge plans on spamming more infantry, he's probably safe to do so. I think the issue would be if J Lodge, instead of this flat filling, had gotten a pack 38 out, he might have found himself in trouble. Oh, good use of the uh, tank trap for cover. Engineers on the flank. A little bit too far away to hit. Yeah, there we go. Pete Grins. Oh, they could go down here. MG34 trying to protect, but really can't. Now here comes the flamethrower burst onto it. But the flak filling has hit the field. MG34 is going to back up. Oh, wow. Big burst from the flak filling. AT gun's not in position. These rifles could take a bunch of damage, too. Oh, Captain off that more brush. So that MG's just going to retreat. Ooh, first AT gunshot hits. It's got to back out. You don't want to take another shot from M1. Right now, he doesn't have the vehicle survival package yet. Crash is on the flank, capping up. So, that little push. Uh, so, you see Jaylaj getting back a little bit of the map control, getting his fuel control back. Um, yeah, Leo definitely needs to invest in healing. He's got his Greyhound on the way. Good, really good fuel control for him early. Might be able to tech so quickly, get a Greyhound on the field. Ooh, the crotch just needs to not sit still. Yeah, so AT gun already paying off the flak filling force to the rear. Both players really in need of healing here. Yeah, and J Lodge, he's going for his med truck. I think it'll it really swings early engagement. I'd also, I know he's prioritizing the uh, LMGs on his Panzer Grenadiers. I'd really love to see him uh, get a flamethrower out on these Panzer Pioneers to help shift some of these engagements. Greyhound starts to chip away. Yeah, it's going to hit harder without the med truck. The med truck is in place. Crouches and forces off the scouts. Really no hard AT for J Lodge here. And so this Greyhound going to continue to do a lot of damage to that MG34. Oh, crowd shits and gets ganged up on and knocked out. j does a soft retreat, gets back to the med truck. Flak filling in place of support. But good push here, right? Leo keeping his combat power together, right? Really takes this uh, this north side of the map. And he's getting healing up in his headquarters as well. 
Black Hilling rolls up. Alright, one rifle squad forced off. Oh my gosh, they may go down on retreat here. That'd be a huge pickup, and they do. The Black Hilling's gotta get out. Greyhound's gonna chase. He works around the house. Nice use of the sight blocker. He's got enough munitions for a, a couple of uh, AT grenades here. There you go. So the Greyhound forced back. And now these Panzer Grenadiers, a second one comes in, gets the engine crit anyway, and now they could burn down this AT gun here. Leo kind of caught out of position. He's got a couple squads in base. Yeah, you'd love to see a D crew just get rid of that Vet 1. Vet 1 cleared. They're going for another uh, AT grenade onto this Greyhound. Rifles and engineers, they're going to do a lot of health damage to this squad. Here it goes. Will it be enough to kill the Greyhound? No, it's not. This b Grand squad here is going to go pursue trying to get the kill. This is a lot of manpower to bleed to try to kill one Greyhound. Well... Interesting engagement. J Lodge able to take control of some of the south side of the map here, these Panzer Pioneers. I think so. Uh, I'm just going to nitpick here. I think if you're going to use these Panzer Pios for capping, you know that Leo has an engineer on the field. I would at least get sweepers on, right? Because then you don't get caught off guard. Uh, the Panzer Grenadiers are scaling well into the anti infantry engagements. You've gotten a kill in the rifle squad. So now you're less worried about rifle spam. Nice. Rifle forced away. Captain's got to rethink. The, uh, the AT gun here has been recruited. But at least you cleared the Vet 1. So no no more combat bonus there. No focus sight ability. And, and so the combination... This is a, kind of a good way to counter uh, USF, right? At least early. Because you've got these Panzer Grenadiers doing decent DPS. You've got MG34 and Flak Brilliant from crowd control. And so you can potentially bottom. Oh no, the Flak Brilliant didn't see the shot. The second shot's coming. Oh, so quick. And and good work by Leo keeping his units up front to spot for that AT gun. Uh, J Lodge going to get a Pack 38 onto the field uh, using the, the half track call in. And Leo has gone. Special Ops, and he's gotten the Weasel with the Pack Howitzer. Oh, smart play, right? Especially with the uh, the Flak Filling going. And he doesn't want to knock this out because he has the Salvage Kit ability. So Now, one thing to point out, um, the Pack 38 Half-Track Call-In is the least economical of the Half-Track Call-Ins. It's 275, right? The uh, Pack 38 costs 250. And then, so you're basically getting the half track at a, a 225 manpower discount. But compared to the LEIG, uh, it's just not a good uh, buy there. Good dodge on the grenade. The grenade's force back. This is also smart from JLodge. Like when you're not using the med truck forward, move it back to your base so you just get the automatic heals without the micro attacks. Uh, here's the Greyhound. Pack 38 not set up. Oh, first shot whiffs. That's unfortunate. There won't be a follow-up. MG-34 has uh, suppressed these scouts, but Captain, Rifle, now Weasel's on the flank. Here come the Pigrens in on the side. And the Sticky goes off, so that Weasel is done. Good pick up there. The Weasel can be really valuable if you can keep it alive. Uh, but the Greyhound and the Engineer is probably going to win. I like the Focus Fire, but it forces them to stand still. They're going to take more damage from this Greyhound. Yeah. Now half track rolling around. I wonder if he's going to use this to try to, you know, tow away stolen weapons. Um, there are a lot of cheeky uses for this half track. <clears throat> a good push up here by the Panzer Pioneers. He, J Lodge is floating a fair number of munitions. Yeah, I really think if he he could be laying mines. Here's the salvage. We'll get some manpower back. That's such a, a, an important ability for the DAC. Oh, this half track is eating rounds, but he's probably using it to cover. I, I like that. Then the Greyhound can't uh, bully these, these Panzer Grenadiers who have the veteran squad leaders upgrade. So they're just going to continue to outscale the rifleman here. Oh my gosh, you got a second pack howitzer? 
Oh, God bless. That's, uh, that's going to start to be oppressive if Jaylash doesn't invest in the vehicles. He's got tier four on the way. And Leo's now teching grenades. I think he wants his rifles to be able to do some damage to these vehicles, potentially throw snares. Wow, the pack howitzers doing a ton of damage to the half track. Man, two of them, it just really punishes Egrens for the way they want to fight. Plus the engineers of the flamethrower. That's a really powerful combination. And this MG34 also going to suffer every time it sets up. Going to start getting annihilated by these back howitzers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and, and, and this build from Leo makes a lot of sense, right? Looking at the composition of J Lodge's force, right? Team weapons, Panzer Grenadiers, the double pack howitzer, uh, the Greyhound, it, he's, it's, and then the engineer the flamethrower. Built very intelligently. He's down on VPs. But he's going to start capping up this opposite side, so we won't, still won't have too much pressure. J Lodge had a P3 on the way. I think he changed his mind. He's going for armored reserves, so that means we're probably going to see a Panzer IV here. The Assault Grenadiers. Second AT gun now on the way for Leo. Good dodge of the grenade. Oh, his rifle's getting burned down. Half-track moves up to support. Wow. The double pack howitzer. Brutal. Yeah. J Lodge has got to find a way to counter these. And he's keeping them close together. So a walking Stuka would probably be pretty punishing. But right now, all of his infantry engagements are going to be a struggle. With both pack howitzers on this side of the map, I wonder if J Lodge doesn't start pushing on the south side. To just get out of their arc a little bit. We've talked in the past about how this map... Oh my gosh, just so much bleed. And Dak really, really can't afford to bleed that much manpower. This map in particular, it's very flat. So if you get decent uh, artillery... Um, in this case, pack houses have good range. You can basically contest two-thirds of the map relatively easily. And now he's moving these pack howitzers to the center. He's keeping the Greyhound with him. And I think this is smart. He doesn't need the Greyhound for mobility. What he needs is protect against Panzer Grenadier pushes. Well, the Weasel's already gotten that one. He can use that for healing if he needs to. Panzer Grenadiers prevent the engineers from laying the mine. Use the focus fire. And they're going to move up here. I think at their partial health, they just need to get out. These pack outs are going to start to hit. Oh, big hit. They're forced away. He hasn't chosen... Okay, so he hasn't chosen a veteran C for the, the weasel. That one, the weasel gets a lot of utility. The, uh, the signal cables for the resource boost when you capture a point. Oh, preemptive grenade. Does some health damage. Half-track moves up. MG-34 on the flank. Oh, Weasel takes pack 38 shot. Half-track's going to try to run it down, but he's going to run into an M1 AT gun, so that half-track is done. Just a little bit overextended. Oh, that AT gun hits Vet 2. On the flank, Panzer Pioneer is forced off by these uh, rifles. Panzer Grenadiers are going to get this fuel back. Is j -Lodge stalling for a Tiger? Maybe he thinks he can hold on. Oh, is that a third? That's a third pack howitzer. What? Okay. How does he have the manpower for this? Well, is it, I know there are going to be people in the comments. USF, man. USF. Yeah, I, and you're not wrong. Let me see here. But none, none of the ISC upgrades. So it's not even advanced logistics. All right. So JLH has decided against on for the Tiger. P4 hits the field. We're going to see a little bit of a power spike here. He's got eight command points. You know, this is going to sound terrible. What might be a good counter to all these team weapons is a Flampanzer. You get the P4 on the field. Then you get the Flampanzer from the armored support battle group. Oh, those grenades. Well dodged. 
Pack outs or shots come in. Panzer IV bounces one of the AT gun shots. P guns move up to try to challenge, but you, you can see all this artillery hitting constantly. And then that anti infantry loader is available if he really needs it. Good push here by J Lodge, and he's backing Leo up into this uh, like little uh, salient here. But there's just so much firepower, and J Lodge is underinvested into vehicles, overinvested into infantry and team weapons. And now we see it. Leo going for the advanced logistics. I wonder if he's even going to get. It looks like he'll probably will go for the tank Tivo because he's got Whizbang production unlocked. Um, this is a decent indicator. J Lodge still an advantage on on VPs. He's got two of the three. And these Pegrans, they do a lot of work. Oh, Captain Barrage comes in to, to just really mess with the Pioneers trying to repair that P4. Good Panzer Grenadier push here, but man, the short range shot from the Pack Howitzer. Greyhound moves up trying to protect the Howitzer and the AT guns. I, I like the idea with the grenades, but it whips just a little bit. Oh, you don't want a forward heal here, man. This Pegrans squad could go down. It's going to fully retreat. There it is. There's the anti-infantry loader. This could be really painful for J Lodge. See, comes in, actually doesn't do too much damage to that P Grand Squad, but it is going to shove J Lodge all the way back. Right? And now, Leo going to take control of both of the center fuels. P4 here to, to challenge the capture. He's got to be careful. There are two AT guns in the rear. They're not moving up. So look. I like this. He's using the sight blocker. Now rifle's going to sprint up, to try to throw off a sticky. I, I don't really see the utility in that, unless you're going to follow up with these AT guns. But they're in place. Oh, and they do have good sight. Now the tank keep on the way. Wow, four consecutive penetrations. Pack 38 cleared by the anti-infantry strafe. P4 is forced to back up all the way to make sure it doesn't get knocked out. And now these Panzer Pioneers trying to cap the South VP. They're going to get forced away by the rifling captain here. And it looks like Leo's going to get the triple cap set up. Honestly, I'm still a little bit mind blown over the, uh, the triple pack howitzer. I mean, with the Weasels, that's a 1,200 manpower investment. Uh, and he may get it back in terms of uh, kills onto the DAC. But that... To float that much, maybe it's the fact they only had two rifles on the field, so he just can't bleed that much. Pack 38 recruit, forced away by rifles here. And it looks like J Lodge is again going to try to push up through the center. Rifle's going to jump into this garrison. Good push. Yeah, these Pegrins, they're basically forced to continue to fight on the move, which is not how they want to live. Hey, look, he's trying to clear this pack out, sir. Engagement on the opposite side. Greyhound called over here trying to defend against a separate infantry push. The one pack out are cleared. The weasel's going to come pick it up so he can't get... Well, I thought it was going to pick it up, but it's just going to back up. It's a good push, but in the end of the day, that's not that much manpower bleed. And you, you can't destroy the pack howitzer. And now these two weasels on the field. Plus the Greyhound. Leo has a lot of mobility and a lot of vehicles that, that are not going to bleed for him. But he's got a ton of resources. With the tank depot out. We may see you know, a bulldozer or some Hellcats here soon. Oh, that MG-34 is toast. One more round from the pack house here. It'll be two, three. MG-34 knocked out. P4 counters. Now, Captain Mortar Barrage coming in as the, the Pioneers try to counter, uh, grab that MG-34. They'll get it and get away. Now we have just two uncapped BP. J 
J-Lodge, I mean, he's saving up quite a bit. I yeah, imagine now he's doing the stall for the Tiger. He's obviously got the emergency repair kits upgrade. Leo, he's got a Hellcat on the way. He's got two AT guns, including one at Vet 2. Yeah, and like, these Pegrans can't even make it to the front without bleeding a third of their manpower or their health to these back houses. Oh my gosh. The round's just following them around. Look, he's microing them around the VP. But the laser guided pack how it surrounds. And they come in decap and then they back up for heals. Assault Grenadiers over on the flank. They might be able to pick up pick up this weasel, but the Greyhounds kinda do a ton of damage. No, and they're gonna be forced to back away. Oh, this MG34 is almost certainly done. Again. Insult to injury. Another anti-infantry loiter. So the MV34 is picked back up. P4 and Panzer Grenadiers trying to because J Lodge really needs to increase his fuel income just a little bit so he can afford this tiger. Man, engineers take a ton of chunk damage, but only drop one model. Greyhound on one flank, AT gun sitting up on the other. The P4 are forced to back up. It can't support these P grands against the Greyhound. Man, this almost feels like when the air support center was good and you couldn't move anywhere as access without being under constant, constant bombardment. There's three pack howitzers. Oh, good hit from the pack 38 onto the Greyhound. Forces it to back away. Now the P4, the Pentagrenadiers, they might get another rifle squad pickup here. Pegrens trying to get on the retreat. Oh, Hellcat pushes all the way through. It's going to pick up the med truck. Pack 38 flips around. But any Panzer Grenadiers, they're trying to position themselves to get a snare off. One more shot. Oh, the Hellcat goes down before it can finish off the P4. AT guns move up, though. Trying to use focus sight to knock out that P4. It won't work. It'll be forced to back up. Really aggressive play there from Leo. Doesn't pay off for him. Drops the Hellcat. Oh, one weasel eats an AT gun round and then backs up. Still alive. And J Lodge now has enough for the Tiger. Leo floating a ton of resources. I think he's got all the anti infantry firepower he needs with these three pack howitzers. There's the tiger. No. Oh, I like this. The salvaging the vehicle. Right? That's where a lot of this manpower is coming from. He's going to get another med truck out now. Oh. These rifles here. Yeah, he's. So Leo's building another Hellcat. I think that's the play. A couple of Hellcats. Oh. B4 needs to back up. Good salvo from the AT guns forces it back. Captain, yeah, at risk of going down. Jail is able to capture the center. And now I think he'll be able to anchor a little bit better in the middle with this Tiger. So no rapid advance still and no vehicle survival kits because you haven't seen the smoke. But you are seeing the self repairs, the emergency repair kits. Well, he could clear both of these AT guns with one shot, but it whiffs, and now he's forced to back up as they... <laughs> the AT guns penetrate the front line of the Tiger. Now, granted, that one is Vet 3. Oh, Pack 38 follow-up shot under the Greyhound. It's still not enough to kill it. Well, that'll do it. Greyhound finally knocked out. AT guns back up to recrew. But Leo, using the, uh, the Weasel and the scouts and, and some engineers. He has the triple cap on. Well, J-Log's going to punish these engineers. AT gun's out of position. Oh, MG-34. This is just not... 
<laughs> it is not scaling well. It continues to be recruited. You found warriors. So Leo's got one Hellcat out, and he's got a second on the way, and he's leaving it in his base, which honestly I think is probably the right choice. Keep it concealed from J Lodge until he needs it. They're gonna move up. I know they're trying to salvage this vehicle. They take a ton of damage. Yeah, and then that Hulk knocked out by Pack Alistair's. The J Lodge gonna flip the script on the VPs briefly. Tiger being repaired. Already at bet one. Now, are these the rating flares? No, he didn't. Oh, he went for the smokes instead of the rating flares. So those are from the scout. So the rating flares I really like because they increase your uh, your infantry accuracy. And so I think that's something that is slept on special operations battle. So here's a push from Leo in the middle, not realizing the Tiger and the people on the flank. The anti-infantry strafe comes in, targeting the pack 38. The P4 probably needs to back up. It's eating some AT gun shots. Eats a lot of them. And the strafe's gonna allow them to keep sight. Cool. Scouts annihilated by the Tiger here in the center. The Tiger really unconcerned. Oh, now here comes a double Hellcat. Oh, wow, the volley from the AT guns. The Tiger could go down here to these Hellcats. They're not engine critted, but it was stunned. And they're able to just push on its flank. And the Tiger knocked out. Nice push from Leo. He may pay for it with one or both Hellcats. Pack 38 lined up to shoot. Going for a, a, a anti-tank grenade here to finish up there. So one Hellcat goes down to the Pack 38. Oh man. Pack Howitzer shots. These Panzergrins need to get out. They could go down as well. Oh man, I really thought that last round was going to do it. Suppression from the MG34 turns this engagement in favor of j -Log. And look, he's got to like literally micro his Pgrens around the VP to avoid the constant barrages from the pack house. I think instead of capping this fuel, he needs to be capping this it, for j -Log. He's been in a good position, but I think the only way he wins this game now is on is on VP pressure. He's just going to continue to bleed, especially as these pack howitzers gain veterancy. And Leo has enough resources, especially now with advanced logistics. He can get, uh, you know, another Hellcat now, potentially a third relatively easily. And Popcap's not really an issue for him. I think, yeah, if j Lodge wants to win this, he really needs to prioritize VP pressure. Salt Grenadiers force away these rifles. Oh, this Hellcat. Oh, no. First salvo comes in from the 57s. Hellcat on the chase. B4 backs away, but no smoke. And the Hellcat could get in the, the final shot here. It sees the Pack 38. Wow, it doesn't take the, the killing shot. So the P4 are able to get away. Now salvaging this Hellcat here for the manpower. He's recovering. Oh, he's almost got enough resources for another Tiger. Good use of the salvage mechanic. Man, so much here. He's floating so many munitions. What about unlocking the Suka dive bomb to deal with these? Or... Even the anti-vehicle loiter, next time there's a big Hellcat push, you throw that down, they just can't deal with the damage. So Leo got a replacement rifle squad out, trying to cap the V- I think they successfully capped the VP, but now they're just bleeding these P-Grens. But the stolen MG-34 suppressing the P-Grens. Alright. The old let's try this again with the Tiger. Ooh. Big initial barrage comes in on these assault grenadiers. They don't react. Fortunately, sight removed now that they've decapped the point. Yeah, one or two more rounds might have knocked out that squad. 
Jaylage over here on the flank. He's committed to getting the VP advantage. Yeah, now Jaylage. Okay, so he's gone for the Stuka and a tank floater instead of the dive bomb. And then maybe next is a command tank. Uh, or another another P4 could be good, but the command tank with all the infantry you have on the field, those defensive buffs, really helpful with all the pack outs or shots coming in. Leo conserving some resources. Oh man. Wow, nice shot from the tiger. Knocks out that vet three rifle squad on the center VP. Tiger gonna push again. AT guns come up. One shot balances, one shot penetrates. Here's the Hellcat. And now here's the anti-vehicle loiter to counter the Hellcat. First pass comes in and smokes it. Packhouser's not going to do much. Tiger still is taking a decent amount of damage, so it's going to back up. Leo really pushing on this flank VP. So he's going to be able to cap it. The Pens are going to just continue to contest it. Now they're suppressed. They probably need to just retreat. Yeah. Yeah, J Lodge may be the rapid advance so his vehicles can start capping points. Man, this MG34 really hurting him. Oh, good assault grenade barrage, even while suppressed. Does some damage to the rifle squad. This Hellcat uh, avoiding the, uh, the loiter range rings here. And this fighting position in the middle is going to become a machine gun nest, interestingly enough. I think he's just trying to protect his little uh, howitzer battery here. Pegrins get on the flank. And now Pack 38 going to chip away at this bunker. Pack how he's forced to back up. P4 comes up to assist. Another fighting position here. Second Hellcat hits the field. Grenade comes in on the engineers. He sees it in time, backs out. It, P Grand's worth noting, they took a ton of damage, but didn't drop any models. So now J Lodge in a good spot uh, from a resourcing perspective. He could get another P4 out here. He could get a Command Panzer. Oh no, this Hellcat caught out of position. It's backing up. It's supported by the AT guns in the second Hellcat, so it'll be okay. But the Pack 38, oh, the second Hellcat that comes into support may go down. Tiger just advancing on the howitzer battery. Wow, a couple of attack grounds through the, the hedge here penetrate the tiger. Uh, these Pegrens just running roughshod. Now, right at the center of the map, J Lodge has got. Two of the three VPs, He's, he basically has Leo where he wants him now, I think. P4 taking some shots. Ooh, that's actually, that's a lot of penetration. Third Hellcat on the way. 100 VPs left, so basically three minutes of in-game time at the current uh, capture rate. With the third Hellcat here, Leo's got one shot to make a push. Rifle squad moves up. Oh my gosh, the first shot from the tiger knocks out four models. They're forced away. Nice strong point here from J Lodge here in the center. And it looks like Leo's gonna take a minute. He's gonna repair this Hellcat, and he's got basically one chance for one good push. But this vetted up DAC infantry, just really, really strong. And it looks like J Lodge is going to get the triple cap on here. Oh man. Is the sticky grenade coming? No, it doesn't trigger it in time. But the MG34 doing a ton of damage. And the pack howitzers continue. Oh, the but the Stuka loiter is available now. Here come the Hellcats. They go to charge the uh, the tiger. 
But the Stuka Loiter comes in. So they've got to get out of the arc. One Hellcat goes down to the Tiger. Wow, they may knock it out. He's trying to lure him back into the Loiter. They get away, but uh, we get with the Tiger. And out of the, oh, now one of them. Oh, Pack 38 knocks out one. The other one, dangerously low health, gets knocked out by the P4. And the DAC infantry, meanwhile, on the flank, have taken the north side VP. Leo's going to grab the center here. Oh, P4. Getting challenged by the 50. Oh, but it bounces. A shot. And now the DAC infantry collapsing into the center here. Leo has capped it. These engineers have to stop fighting. Have oh, the weasel's going to get on the VP. Oh, engineers burned down by the assault grenadiers. And now J Lodge. And they're, they're toast. J Lodge's going to get on the center VP. Oh, assault grenadiers take a big hit from the pack out, sir. But their grenades knock out two MG34 crew members. J Lodge back on the center VP. Med truck forward. Oh man, this weasel can't cap fast enough. He's got it, but it's not it's not gonna be enough. There's no one to cap the center of the South VP. Meanwhile, Panzer Grenadier savaging these Hellcats. J Lodge is gonna get another tiger out in a minute if he needs it. But it looks like he won't. He's gonna three VPs left. He's gonna take this on VPs here. And that's going to be it. We have outfoxed the enemy once more. Well played. All right, so starting out, reviewing J Lodge's build order. As you can see from kind of the colors on the left hand side, lots of tech, lots of call ins, right? After he gets his kind of initial uh, build and army composition set up. Right, so rolls at Panzer Pioneers, Krod, Schitzen, uh, selects his battle group right away, and then goes three Panzer Grenadiers. So fairly meta start if you're not going to roll uh, with Bersalieri. From here, he goes into the light support company and the fire support elements. Gets an MG34 out and then a flak Ling. This works for him. The MG34 works for him pretty well in the early game. But as he gets into the mid and late game, uh, uses loses its utility and then starts to really suffer from the pack outsers. The flak Ling, um, when it's up, does a, does a pretty good job. Eventually gets knocked out by the AT guns. Um, but at this point, his Panzer Grenadiers are vetted up enough that it, he doesn't need it to counter the infantry um, uh, that uh, that Leo has on the field, right? And Leo doesn't play with a very rifle-heavy build, so this kind of works in his favor as the game goes along. Uh, he gets a med truck. He gets veteran squad leaders. Uh, he calls in the Pack 38 mechanized group. I talked about it in the cast. It's really the least economical of the choices with the half-track call-ins. Uh, so if you can, you know, use that call-in for something else. Panzer Jaegers, LEIG, uh, and just build the Pack 30. Um, then he goes Tier 4. And immediately goes armored reserves rather than build that p3 he thinks about it for a minute um i like this i think initially he's going to stall for a tiger right away decides against it because he starts to get pushed back it's his p4 on the field uh the the at guns do hold it at risk quite a bit but it does a good job of shoring up his support around the map and it doesn't bleed to the pack howitzers uh from there we see the emergency repair kit uh really first for the vehicles as far as tech goes um and then he gets the uh, gets his first tiger, uh, gets a replacement med truck, then replaces the tiger after it gets destroyed. Uh, goes for the vehicle survival package and the rapid advance. Um, that's really helpful late game, especially right when you're trying to close out VPs. Being able to use your vehicles to cap or just sit on points, uh, I think, is really smart. And at the end of the game, really, what saves him is the way he uses the battle group, right? So um, we talked about he goes uh, veteran gutter for the penetration, goes salvage. Uh, you know, the rapid advance blitzkrieg ability. And then he goes for the loiter, which initially I would have preferred he used the dive bomb um, to deal with like the pack howies in the back. But the loiter saves him twice uh, when dealing with the Hellcats because it zones out so much of the map, knocks the Hellcats down to only a sliver of health, makes him really susceptible to the rest of his units, even if it doesn't kill them outright. Uh, would have liked to see him maybe go earlier into the Flampanzer, uh, especially dealing with those team weapons. I think that could have been really effective. Uh, and then the command panzer, if he had been able to keep the tiger alive, the command would have been really a game. And then over to Leo, 
So we talk about his early build, scouts, engineers, barracks, three rifles. We talked about that during the cast, pretty standard. A little light on rifles, which I know the, the discussion, YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit and all that. But three rifles is a little light uh, for USF. But he does have good fuel control. Uh, ISC into motor pool. Gets an AT gun out early, uh, which actually I think it helps him because it hits the field just before the flak for Ling. So it gives him the ability to push that back. Uh, and then a Greyhound, which lasts most, if not all, of the game. Right? And he ends up using it initially to kind of push around the Pegrens, but then he's conservative with it. And I actually like that he uses it to protect his little battery of howitzers. Um, Texan Med Station. Then he goes Special Operations Battle Group and immediately gets two weasels with the pack how toad pack howitzer out. Um, this is a little nuts. I've never seen this before. I've definitely never seen three. Um, and this is, I think, my only critique. I, I like the idea, right? Your opponent is DAC. He's playing with infantry and team weapons. The only vehicle really is the, uh, the flak filling. And the pack howitzers, and especially on this map, especially on Famineville, pack howitzers are great. They do a ton of damage. But I think the third might have been an overinvestment. I think two is probably the sweet spot with this, especially keep five. Lots of utility there. Um, Texas grenade package gets the second AT gun out. Then he goes tank depot uh, and he gets his third pack howitzer out. And then from here, it's really just Hellcats. He gets advanced logistics. He builds a fighting position, but it's Hellcats for the rest of the game, right? So he's relying on the pack howitzers to do his anti infantry work and the Hellcats to do his anti vehicle with support from the AT. Gun. Um, and he's floating a lot of manpower. Even at the end of the game, he's got like 600 manpower in the bank. And this is where I think he could have used the battle group a little bit better, right? So instead of that third pack howitzer, I'd start getting squads SSF on the field. He's down to a single rifle squad at the end of the game. Um, they're just not scaling. Without the BARs, without the survivability, they can't beat the late, uh, late game Panzer Grenadiers. SSF can, at least, especially if you get them vetted, they can hang in there with the Panzer Grenadier, and then you can switch to the bazookas to help deal with some of the armor. So now they can start to zone out the map as well, because no matter what you push against them, um, they can handle it. So I think, in my mind, that's kind of the answer here, the thing that he is missing. The other thing I really wish he would have used from the battle group, um, the raiding flares would have been a great combination with the AT guns and the pack howitzers to spot. I think that's a, that's a misclick. Um, and then the assault operation for the faster capping. He was behind on VPs for this whole game. I would have prioritized that um, towards the end of the game. It really gives you the ability to kind of undo the triple cap quickly. Um, so I think missed opportunity there. But uh, well played. Really interesting build order. I like the use of the pack houses. I think it's effective. I'd love to see this against Wehrmacht. I think it'd be a great counter to uh, pack 40. So um, yeah, interesting approach there. So getting into the kind of the takeaways here, obviously just talked about the pack houses. It's a really interesting counter. The downside is you've got to be floating a lot of manpower for it. Um, the upside is you also get the weasel. Now, this is my issue with the pack house or call in and the weasel in general is that one CP, the weasel sometimes lacks utility. But on a map like Famineville, and especially against the DAC, who kind of have to play concentrated based on their combined arms bonus, the utility you get from the weasel and kind of capping the sides could be really helpful. I love the pack outsiders to counter the team weapons, to force the Panzer Grenadiers to, to fight on the move. Um, unfortunately, like as the Pegrens scale, they do shoot their LMGs on the move. They get to vet three, they can they get really chonky and they can start to eat those rounds. Um, it becomes less effective. And then you got to worry about a big Panzer Grenadier push kind of rolling right up to the middle. I also wonder how this would work against Bristolieri uh, or uh, Wehrmacht Panzer probably struggle but it, against a team weapon heavy build i think this is uh, an interesting approach and one that's probably effective this is also something you could definitely do during games if you're in a centralized position you invest a lot of manpower into those pack howitzers it's a lot of micro but you could really start to turn engagements for you. Um, it's really interesting the, the dac panzer grenadiers this is just one of those things where like early game versus riflemen especially a fair fight's not really a fair fight with them and then, especially with the rifles not getting BARs, the Panzer Grenadiers with the veteran squad leader with the LMG, they hit Vet 2, they hit Vet 3, man, they just become little Terminators, right? They do a lot of work, they challenge team weapons, um, and then they get the synergy with the vehicles. Very, very dangerous. And J-Lodge keeping his squads alive, 
uh, till the end of the game, his KD was insane, right? So he, he was doing a great job there. Using them to apply pressure, you've just got to get them at veteran C. You've got to keep them alive. Um, so a couple of things. So J Lodge, obviously he won. Uh, he played this well. I I really like in the middle of the game. I don't know how I would have countered those back outsers. That was nuts. Um, I think though you could probably see the Hellcats are coming. Um, twice the Tiger got kind of like pushed to the side. He got some unlucky penetrations with the the M one A two guns in the back as well. The Hellcats flank it, knock it out twice. I think at this point, like my. Call it a criticism, critique. The Panzer Pioneer play could have been more aggressive. More mines, get a sweeper, get a flamer, get a second Panzer Pioneer, especially early, right? The the double Panzer Pioneer with flamer to support a couple of friends, like that is nasty. Cover no longer work. That could have been really helpful in pushing off the AT guns of pack howitzers and so. Um, and then yeah, mines always, um, especially on flanks when you're gonna rely on something as critical as a tiger. Um the AT gun front penetration. So uh, this is something I've been noticing more and more lately. Um, I mean, AT guns, yeah, they should be hard anti-tank. But like when the 57 mil, six pounder because they're the same gun, when when it's reliably penetrating the front armor of the Tiger, like that doesn't feel right. And so I think across the board, I'd like to see like medium and heavy tank front armor only go up. I feel like AT gun shots to the front the exception of obviously the 17 pounder and the 88 AT gun shots to the front should really be a coin flip maybe on mediums and then even less for heavies to reward flanking and then probably buff the penetration on stuff like the hellcats um do you, uh, tank destroyers you want to reward for being in the right position hellcats are kind of weird because you don't really use them as a tank destroyer you like drive around and, and fast flank them but the guns on them should be nasty you should be able to hit penetrated range um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. It's just something that's been bouncing around my skull the last couple of games, um, some frustrations. And I know AT gun frontal penetration can be really problematic and teams get bottled up and there's no way to, to kind of flank uh, and address them. Um, Famineville, I like this map. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit, right? Above average resource income on both the fuel and the uh, ammunition side. It's Because it's very wide, it's very shallow, right? Artillery play is really powerful here. Mortars, I think, do a little bit better. So, like, the best thing on this map is the Brit 120. Um, I'm sorry, the 4.2 inch, all the same. Um, and then uh, the pack howitzers, LEIG, do really well, but you have to micro them just a little bit more. Um, the AT guns, I think, because there are lots of little sight blockers, especially on the north side of this map, um, keeping your AT guns in lanes uh, helps them kind of manage vehicles, but it does reward having multiple AT guns to cover multiple approaches rather than trying to blob two together in the middle. And then the width of this map makes it really difficult to get a triple cap, but man, it's, it's really hard to break a triple cap, especially when you're down on VPs. Like maybe you can get one, but if you're behind trying to, to go from being triple cap to having two, three really challenging. And we've seen that play out on a couple of so far on this. map. So, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoy. I am looking forward to the new patch. It's coming. It's a week away. Um, can't wait to cover that with you guys. If you're interested, I'm going to be testing out the live observer mode, doing live casts uh, on my Twitch channel. So check that out. Um, thanks, everyone. And we'll see y'all in the next one.